Hey everyone, Andrew from Educate here, and today we're going to take a quick look at the ASUS Tinker Edge T, a credit card sized computer that's finally not named after a dessert like the Raspberry Pi or the Milo Dinosaur computer. Just joking, I made up the last one. Now this video is sponsored by ASUS because they did send me this board about 9 months ago to test and the reason why it's taken this long to do a video is I've kind of been having a lot of fun with it. Now I know it's easy to look at a computer like this and ask how's it compared to the Raspberry Pi? Well on paper the ASUS Tinker Edge T does have a slower CPU, less RAM and less USBs but it wasn't built to be a general purpose computer like the Raspberry Pi. This board is kind of more of like an ASIC computer in that it was built to do one thing really well and that's artificial intelligence inference or in simple English using AI to put bounding boxes around objects or using AI filters to make you look like an anime character that's super kawaii. Anyway where I was going with this was this board is more of a competitor to the Google Coral and Nvidia Jetson Nano boards which are especially built for AI applications and the reason why this ASUS Tinker Edge T is a competitor to those boards is that it comes with a neural network chip in the form of a Google Edge Tensor Processing Unit or TPU for short and this TPU contains enough power for you to run TensorFlow AI applications which traditionally required desktop levels of CPU and GPU power. So after you've trained your neural network model to do object detection, image classification or pose estimation you can convert your TensorFlow Lite model to an Edge TPU model, copy it to the ASUS Tinker Edge T and run inference on it with pretty decent performance. This is all good and well on paper but let's see how it performs when it's put to the test. So I fired up the board, updated to the latest distro and downloaded some pre-compiled models with sample code from the Google Coral website. When I run inference using OpenCV with SSD MobileNet V2 at 480p this board sustains 30 FPS. At 720p it dips down to 10 FPS which might be slow for some but depending on your use case and camera shutter type it might still be okay and at 1080p it drops to 5 FPS which again could work for your use case but 480p was the best option for me. What I find amazing about all this is it's making AI more affordable, efficient and portable which subsequently lowers the barrier of entry for industrial and hobbyist AI use cases. And speaking of hobbyist use cases, the reason why it's taken 9 months to make this baby uh, video <laughs> is because I've been busy building and programming a smart remote control car an automatic license plate recognition system you can install in your car and busy upgrading a drone to do real-time object detection all with this little board. If you want to see those videos in the future please hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out. Anyway if you're an AI expert I'm sure it'll take you way less time to build these things but I'm pretty new to AI and this was a huge learning experience for me because 9 months ago I'd never really touched Linux terminals, SSH, deep learning, neural networks, uh, computer vision, industrial camera technology and building software from source which are things I've had to learn along the way to build those three applications. And look I'm not saying I'm an expert in those areas now, far from it, but this board was a great motivator to finally start learning those things. Anyway that's it for this one, hope you enjoyed this video like I'm enjoying this Milo dinosaur. Mmm, delicious, nutritious. Catch you guys in the next one. See ya.